All right, good afternoon. Thanks you, thank you for rejoining us for what will likely be our final episode today of Live with LAFD. Uh, we're still at Fire Station 13 here in Pico Union, Koreatown. I'm Firefighter Margaret Stewart and with our Community Relations Group. And now we've, we've showed you this morning, we took you to the trucks, saw lots of truck operation. We showed you the fire engine and now we're gonna move to the rescue ambulance. So I'm gonna switch this around so you can get to talk to our couple of our paramedics here. And we'll show you what this apparatus is and the equipment we have here. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Firefighter Paramedic Max Wittenberg. I'm um, working on uh, Rescue Ambulance uh, 13 today. Uh, that's where I'm assigned. Um, so uh, there's different ambulances throughout the city. Uh, this is a paramedic ambulance. So if you see just a, a number like 13 in front of it, uh, or if you say an 800, 800 ambulances are BLS ambulances. So BLS, BLS stands for basic life support. So those have uh, at least firefighter EMTs on it. And uh, the paramedic ambulances have uh, firefighter paramedics, uh, all of which are firefighters, uh, firefighter trained. Um, some have a uh, different uh, uh, level of expertise as far as uh, uh, if they're able to do advanced life support or basic life support. Uh, so I'm just going to show you some of the tools that we use here on the paramedic ambulance. So uh, these are, this is our bread and butter right here. This is our, uh, we have our uh, paramedic box and we have our uh, life pack 15, uh, which we use for uh, various things. So I'll start right here with the uh, paramedic box. Uh, so as you can see here, there's lots of stuff in here. Um, that we can use for uh, various different situations um, and uh, medical conditions that people have. Um, starting from the top here, we have um, our IV catheters, our flushes, uh, stuff that we can use to start IVs on people and give them medications. Uh, we can check people's blood sugar. If they're having a heart attack, we can give them aspirin, nitroglycerin, all sorts of med other medications. People are having uh, overdosing on uh, ver uh, like uh, various drugs and narcotics. We have uh, nasal Narcan. Um, uh, we have uh, things if your heart's slow we can speed it up if your heart's uh, too fast uh, we can um, slow it down and uh, we also have uh, other medications like if you're having an allergic reaction um, and so it's basically just a giant toolbox of uh, medications and things that we can uh, we can use so that way um, uh, we can manage the situation whichever it is um, next I'll move on to our life pack 15 uh, so this is uh, what we use on all of our all of our medical calls uh, to take vitals on people. Um, this can be used if uh, somebody's heart stops beating. Uh, it, can, it can act as a defibrillator. So uh, by reading the rhythm, uh, the rhythm will print out here. Uh, we can either choose to shock. Um, we can, um, if somebody's heart rate is too low, we can pace them, which is basically a little bit of. Um, electricity that goes through you and we can uh, keep their heart rate at a stable level. Uh, if your heart's beating too fast, we can actually shock their heart back into a normal rhythm. Uh, so this is actually a very cru uh, critical tool uh, that we have here on the uh, paramedic rescue. Um, there's also a lot of other tools that we have on here. This is basically just my, my giant office um, and these are uh, some of the main tools that we, uh, we use when we go on scene of a medical call. Right. People ask me if they want to become a paramedic. Do you think they should try to find somewhere they respond to 911 calls or do regular transport inner facility kind of work? Um, so I would, uh, so I actually um, uh, started off doing uh, private transports, um, but I would say the 911 does help out a lot, especially since if you want to get on the fire department, you are going to be running 911 calls. Um, but I, w I wouldn't discount any of the, uh, the private ambulance uh, experience. Um, I say that's valuable experience as far as like patient care and uh, being a real patient advocate. Um, but the 911 calls do uh, definitely help out as far as your uh, experience levels, bringing it to the uh, fire department. Can you briefly explain what paramedic school is like? Uh, so paramedic school, um, so I did mine at Mount San Antonio College. And uh, it's uh, basically, it's in three parts. So you have, uh, your first part would be your didactic, which is basically like you're in class, so it's like a semester of, of uh, rigorous uh, school book work. Uh, learning about physiology, um, cardiology, pharmacology, um, learning about everything that we can possibly do on a medical call. And you're basically the highest medical authority on, on scene of a medical call. Um, and so your didactic, after you're done with your didactic, you do your clinicals, which you go to like a hospital and you uh, perform uh, your skills from your innovations uh, to your IVs, 
and uh, your basic pace, patient assessments and getting those down. Um, after that, you, uh, they send you off to um, a fire department somewhere where that runs 911 calls, and uh, uh, then you get experience running 911 calls and actually being, uh, being the paramedic under the supervision of other paramedics that um, already vetted and have that experience. And so you learn, uh, you do at least 20 shifts there. Um, after that, you have a, um, you take a state test and a national test. Um, and then from there, after you get certified on a national level, uh, then you go to a county level, uh, you take those county tests. And uh, then from there, you can either apply out of state or you can apply uh, right here in California if you have a California state license as well. Oh uh, yeah, so um, in this compartment, so uh, like I said, all of our, um, everybody, all the paramedics that are here are firefighter trained, so uh, this is where we keep our, um, our PPE, so we have a lot of our turnouts, um, so we have our turnouts here that we keep. Um, on the outside, we have uh, different types of equipment, like this is our oxygen, so in case the uh, first, our patient needs oxygen, we have uh, M tanks, uh, which hold a certain amount of, uh, a large amount of oxygen. And we have our D, uh, D tanks, our portable oxygen, which we carry um, on scene two calls. And these are just our spares. You can tell, say, say we've been getting requests for the light, the first time we turn the lights on. So you okay. just, just mention that. Yeah so, if, yeah, so if we get a, a, a call on a, a, a 911 call, um, we can turn our lights on, like how they are right here. And it's something we actually check every morning um, to make sure that they work so that people can see us when we're coming down the road. Um, this is another one of our uh, um, really cool pieces of equipment. It's called a stair chair. Um, so we have a lot of apartments around here. And uh, a lot of times people, they can't walk down uh, or they, we can't assist them to walk down. Um, and so we either need to carry them down or we actually, we have, um, since we have this piece of equipment, we can put them in a chair and we can actually basically slide them down the staircase. And so it actually helps with, um, uh, with saving our backs and, and uh, making sure that we are uh, um, always fit for duty. And this is a very critical tool as far as uh, getting the patient down, especially if they're um, on the heavier side. Um, it, it really helps us out. So uh, stair chair. Are there uh, any other questions? Yeah, of course. So inside the cab here, um, we have... Uh, where we get our calls, so it's called the MDT, so it scans uh, for a mobile data terminal, um, where we get all our call information. Uh, we're able to push and route on scene, um, basically update our status to Metro, which is our dispatch center. Um, we have all of our light controls that you see here. Um, I can control all that through there. Uh, our scene lights, which aren't on right now, but uh, if we need to light up one side of the vehicle, um, we can do that. Well, we have uh, very bright floodlights, so if it's really dark out, we can uh, use those to light up the scene so we can see what we're doing. All right, we're going to go to the back one more time. We had some folks join us a little late, so we're just going to give you a quick view of the back. We have the gurney, their, their medical box, the life pack. 15 the use for the monitor and to be able to provide any electric shocks as needed and then all of their equipment to support all of that All right, thank you very much. We appreciate the tour And that's going to close us out for the day. So thank you for joining us everyone uh, All of our stories today have been saved so they'll so they'll be up top. You're welcome to look at them We hope you will and we also want to continue to remind you that on May 9th, we're going to have virtual fire service day. So we're going to have a lot more coming to you. So please stay tuned and stay safe in the meantime. Bye.